Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You can go to Psalms 119, uh, perhaps. And we're going there. We, we are living there. Bless God. Lately, Sister Rose. Uh, amen. But we're going to, um, hallelujah. Bless God. Thank you, Lord God. Somebody's telling me love him today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's none like you, Lord God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. And it's just because of who you are today, Lord, that we stand here by your grace. That our faith will not rest in the wisdom of me, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. God has given us some thought today. And we really, let's start at, oh, this is so wonderful. Ooh, Jesus is so good. Let's go to Acts 4.13 really quickly. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, praise and hallelujah. I feel you moving. I feel you moving. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Sometimes you will come to a fork in the road and you want 
to know for sure, the Lord, which way do I go? Ah, no, no, no. A pivotal turning point will be your decision. Will you make the right decision or the wrong decision? Will you go right or will you go left? Will you go high or will you go low? Ah, you know, I love what Jesus said. It's coming in this hour and this day to be one of the most important scriptures that we can think on, and that is acknowledge me in all of our ways. And I will direct your path. If you're not careful, you could be inviting someone into your homes with a loaded gun. Ah, if you're not careful, you could and then God began to stir and he dropped the fire in my belly today to lay on this one. Uh, uh, if you're not careful, sometimes uh, we can allow people access and boundaries in our lives that they've not earned the right to get. Uh, so you've not walked with me long enough uh, for me to reveal and open myself up to you like that. Uh, you are not walk with me long enough uh, for me to bring you into my closet and show you all my goods. Uh, you are not even walk with me long enough to hand me some things that I can receive from you. Uh, you are not walk with me long enough. Uh, boundaries. Uh, there are certain people I know, they're in one place. They may start at the back pew or some and certain up, up close that I feel like I can go and they confide. If I got a problem, I feel like I can share it. Ah, but but, but defining moments of when we go past the warning of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes he will send people to warn you something's up. He will send people to warn you. Watch it there. Watch it with that one up. Our brother Tom would say he'd have a train wreck on the inside. He knows something's not right. Uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, my peace left. I know something was up. Amen. Defining moments. But what will you do in the halting? What will you do as you set out to make your decisions? We got to realize that we have an adversary out there, and he does not mean a good. His motto and our mission statement is to steal, kill, and to destroy. Whatever I can do to make life a living hell for you and the children, I want to do it. You know, I find that he has no respect of person. Uh, uh, you can say some things about him. He has no respect of race. Uh, he don't care if you're rich or poor, black or white. Uh, he don't well care if you're a child or if you're elderly. He got the same mission statement. I will say one thing that he is focused. Uh, uh-huh. And we can say another thing about him that he is persistent. Uh, I believe there are some things we can learn from him now. Uh, 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 I believe we can say he is steadfast. Uh, uh, and I don't think he's even been moved right by now. Uh, I think he's still on his job. Uh, amen. I was talking with this little brother that came in from the place of there. We were talking about the scripture where Peter said, Beware. Your adversary goes about in the war and line, seeking who he may devour. Beware. He goes about as a war and line. But I want you to take a trip with me. What if you were in the jungle and there was just one roar and lion loose with you out there? Would you beware? And he was hungry. Would it cause you to beware? Huh? Amen. Amen. He has deadly intent. And that is to wreck our lives by any means necessary. So why hop ye between two opinions? If God said do it this way, you ought to be found doing it. If he said do it this way, you ought to be found doing it. Ah, you know, I'm reminded right about here the scripture said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then not to your own understanding. Uh, some things we can't figure out with our mind, our intellect. And something we don't even need to try. Uh, what if the blind man had said, Lord, don't put that spit mud on my eyes. Because uh, I've never heard of nobody doing that. Uh, it don't make sense. Uh, what if he had interfered with his mind of reasoning? Uh, ah, but he had a faith in God. Uh, Lord, it's you I'm going to do it the way you tell me to do it. Ah, defining moment when God tells you to step off. Uh, do something that you never done. Uh, go somewhere that you never gone. Uh, dare to be different. Uh, I want you to come forth today. I got something for you. I really want to show you my power and who I am. I'm reminded on board ship. There were many individuals on board ship. Bless God. 
in the boat, but one stood up to dare to be different. One stood up, bless God, that was not afraid of men's opinion. One stood up that was tired of the same old, same old, same old stuff and I wanted to see something different. I one stood up and said, Lord, all I need to know is that's you. I want some of that. I, I don't understand it, Lord. I don't see how it works, God. But if it's you, bid me to come. I, there was a defining moment there because the others had the opportunity to go to her. But there was just one that made the decision, I want to go that way. I know it don't look like the way I should go. I, no, it looks a little cloudy and uncharted and this new territory. I've never experienced it before, but, uh, you know, Jesus was just in that place. Ah, and so Peter got up off of the word, come. Jesus is telling many of you, come. Come forth. Allow the children to come unto me. Come. Come on out of this situation. Come on out of that dangerous place. Come on out of the posse. Come away from your peers. Come away from those that will lead you in the wrong direction. Come away from depression. Come, come, come. One rose up. That was the defining moment. Ah, my, 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 my. But as we go through life, we find that we have many steps and many opportunities for defining moments. Peter got ready to stick his foot over the board of the ship and I knew that he was going into uncharted waters, uncharted territory. He could have said, no, I don't think so. Huh? But the defining moment, he decided not to halt between two opinions. He just stepped on over in there. Huh? I, God's doing a new thing with me and I'm going with it. Huh? you never seen me this way before. You ain't seen me out here before. But I know Jesus, hallelujah. Ah, he's calling me and bidding me to come. And I'm going with him, bless God. Defining moments in life. Uh, on how good it is to see the children here in the house of the Lord. Uh, our sister Brenda, there's one thing about her. She has just been a little evangelist for the Lord. And everybody she can get in here, bless God. She is just pulling them in for the Lord. Uh, that's a defining moment. Each day we pass people on the street and I, we never know which one really the Lord is sending them to, if any of those on that day. But we want to keep our ears out. Jesus said, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. Now, she had a defining moment uh, uh, since she's been coming, but every time she's bringing her kids back, she brought her boyfriend back. She's just been bringing, bringing, bringing up to Jesus. Ah! defining moment, bless God. Amen. So we see how good it is to hang around Jesus. How good it is to hang around the word of the Lord. And I'm not talking about an empty word, but the spirit read word of the Lord. Huh? Amen. Amen. And so what makes a difference in their lives, the defining moments and how they define these disciples, these apostles, because they know that there was something different about them. I soldiers for the Lord. Uh, unusual boldness that take them before governors and kings and senators with the same uh, audacity to be bold and speak what God puts on their heart. Uh, uh, no doubt if God told them exercising himself in boldness, uh, he just continues to sit on there. Uh, for somebody like the Lord, they ain't what she should be. Sit on, she bold. Uh, she'll open her mouth. I'm looking for somebody that I can use today. Uh, I'm looking for somebody that the Bible says in Revelation that the people shall be cast into the lake of fire. I cause me to wonder about the fear shackles have to be broken, bless God. God is sending you into places and there are giants out there in the land. But you're going to have to be willing to go forth anyhow, bless God. Defining moments. Uh, they looked at these apostles and these disciples of the Lord and uh, uh, they saw something different with them. Uh, and no doubt they saw the unity by which they walk. Uh, and two of them got together in unity. Uh, they said, these are things that have turned the world upside down. Uh, I wonder why the church of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, cannot really get together in unity. Uh, I believe it's an area that the devil is zero and targeting in on. Uh, by any means necessary, I must keep you separated. Uh, 
because he knows the power of unity. He knows the power of being on one accord. All of these men stood out so that governors and rulers begin to look at them and examine their lives. And they saw mighty works coming forth from them. They saw no doubt food ministries and clothing ministries and ministers of healing and deliverance and giving and uh, prosperity ministers. Uh, they saw them raising up and uh, being effective. Uh -huh. And they looked and they said, there's one thing. So we're trying to figure this thing out. We're trying to figure this fall on one thing, a defining moment in their lives. That they had spent time with Jesus. That they had spent time being still in the presence of the Lord. That they had spent time on their knees praying with the Lord. They had spent time digging in the Word of God. They had spent time seeking Jesus. They had spent time of selling themselves together with the saints. So you recognize when you come together with Two is better than one. And Jesus said, wherever two or three are summer together in my name, there am I in the midst. So when you want how to make the right decision and the right choice, be found to summer with somebody in the name of Jesus. You ought to know that Jesus is going to show up and teach you some things. Jesus is going to show up and reveal some things that you do not know of. He may talk about he may talk about some unusual things, but when you get yourself out the way and say, Lord God, you be God of this situation, all of the Lord and not of me, that'll be a defining moment for some of us. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. Sometimes if we're not careful, we'll have handed who we want to get our blessings from. Oh, Jesus, if we're not careful, and the flesh of man is not prayed up. We're having our minds who we want to bless us and who we want to bless us and who not. Oh, Jesus. Oh, but the defining moment is when you can get past your flesh. Oh, Jesus. You can say, Lord, your way is the only way. The defining moment. Oh, and they looked at the minds of these apostles, these mighty men of God. Oh, and what thing you can say about them? They were stupid. They come through a lot of hard, rugged rain. They've been crucified and crucified and criticized. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they've been told that ain't nothing to you this and that. But Jesus already said, oh, I've been born in sin. Oh, Jesus. They'll look at the outward man. When God said, I'm still looking at that hard man. Oh, Jesus. Where we can get past what people might say and where we can receive what God is sending our way. I think about the prophet Elijah, I believe. But if he had said, Lord, I don't want this. When God sent an old dirty raven to feed him. Oh, Jesus, we know ravens look at these dead things. What if he had been choices and said, Lord, I don't want that. Oh, but that was the defining moment to say, thank you, Jesus. A defining moment. Was when he turned aside. Oh, Jesus. God has brought us into this place today. And the Lord said, I want to reveal myself. I want to expose myself. But when you turn aside and look at me, but when you turn aside, that I'm going to expose myself. It's when you turn aside that I'm going to speak to you. It's when you turn aside, Moses, that I'm going to say something to you. Jesus, when Paul got up after 
he saw the light, after he heard the word, there was a defining moment. Do I obey God? Do I go to the house on Spring Street? Do I go down there to the Lord's house at Lotus Corner? Do I walk into the hand of God ministries? Or do I go somewhere else and do my bidding? Oh, Jesus, that was a defining moment. Oh, Jesus, but Paul made the right decision. He decided to go with Jesus. To a house he'd never been in before. A house and a room that was empty. Oh, but God would send somebody there. Oh, she used to wake him up. It was a defining moment for Ananias. Because when God told him, you go over there. I need you to do something. I need you to lay on the hands. Ananias rose up with excuses. Lord, I heard about this brother. I don't want nothing to do with this brother. I heard about this sister. I don't want nothing do with this sister. Oh, but the defining moment was when he found that he couldn't act about God and he decided to go and obey God and go and lay hands on power. And because he obeyed God, all the greatest apostle that we can ever be in the presence of has been loosed. And because of him today, we read the word of God in power and purity. Oh, Jesus. Jeremiah, he was here. He was telling you about a defining moment when God came as a youngster. Ah, oh, there are youngsters in the room today. Ah, oh, brother got some young children here today. Ah, oh, but God began to reveal himself. He said, I want to use you, son. I want you to be a prophet unto the nations. Oh, Jesus, and when it's spoken, said, I'm just a bit too young, Lord. Ah, oh, but he said, before you were born in your mother's womb, I called you. I Oh, Jesus, and to make it a little bit deeper, a defining moment in heaven with God. Who shall I entrust these children to? Who shall I entrust the prophet Jeremiah to? Is there a mother in the land of a prince away to the house of the Lord? With these children that I can speak into their lives, a defining moment for God. Oh, Jesus, he looked all over the crazy, but said, there's one girl called Brenda. To pull her to the house of the Lord. I can trust her to be faithful because they're chosen vessels unto the Lord. Because God is going to use them at a young age. He said, There's a woman that I can trust to have the children under the sound of my voice. That I can speak into their spirit and raise them up. That I can put in them a defining moment. Jesus. 